Hello and welcome to Postcard and a Pint. I'm Rachel. I'm Wills. And today we're going beetling around Liverpool. In today's video, we will be beetling around the childhood homes of the Fab Four, cavorting at the Cabin Club, finding out just who was Eleanor Rigby, and finding the spot where John and Paul first met. Maybe with a little illegal wall climb to get our shot. Come and enjoy our tour of the Fab Four. Oh, and maybe a cheeky pint. Let's go to Liverpool, baby. Let the day trip uh, begin. Sorry. We've parked the car and it's the first stop of the day. The what three words we used are noise, twin, mental. Let's go find a grandstand. Sefton Park is a public park in the south of Liverpool. We weren't really sure the best order in which to do everything in the day, but we did know we'd be able to park here. This old Victorian bandstand is said to be the inspiration for the Beatles song, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Well, what you know? Oh yes, him. Hey dude. As well as the grandstand, there are many other notable features in the park, such as this fountain, being used today as the site of an anti-vax campaign. Let it be. This is the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain, unveiled in 1932. It's a replica of the Shaftesbury Fountain in Piccadilly Circus in London. Well, that was about a two minute drive from where we were parked and here is the famous Penny Lane sign. Not the original one, is it? No, it kept getting nicked. That's Liverpool for you. <laughs> there are no bells and whistles around this sign. We simply drove right past it. Love it. Oh, and we loved that there was a Scouse pavement pizza just below it. Ugh. And that is Paul McCartney's signature. In 2018, James Corden did a carpool karaoke with Paul McCartney around his old haunts in Liverpool. Check it out. It's amazing. Onwards we go for a six minute drive to our next location. We're now at St Peter's Church in Walton. And did you know, this is where John and Paul met for the very first time. It was July the 6th, 1957, and there was a church fete on that day. John's band, the Quarrymen, were playing. Apparently, a schoolmate of Paul said, come along, come and check out this band. Paul thought, hey, up, there might be some girls here, so he agreed to come along. Anyway, the afternoon set was played outside, and Paul thought, they're pretty good. So, in between sets, before the evening, when they played inside, oh, and did you know, the stage from the inside gig is now in the Liverpool Museum. You can check that out. Anyway, Paul said to John, get a go on your guitar. So John thought, all right, then. handed it over. Paul tuned it up correctly, flipped it upside down, because he was left-handed, so he could play it, and banged out a perfect rendition of Eddie Cochran's 20 Flight Rock. John was impressed, secretly impressed. And a couple of months later, Paul was a member of the Quarrymen. Love it. It's very windy and I hope you can hear me, but behind me is the grave of Eleanor Rigby, that famous Beatles song. Now, Paul did base it on a real person, but it's believed that her name was Daisy Hawkins and the name Eleanor Rigby is completely fictitious and it's just by accident that in a churchyard near where the Beatles all grew up is a gravestone with the name Eleanor Rigby on it. I believe Eleanor was an actor could have been based on the actress who starred in Help with them, the movie. And Rigby, I think, was a name of a firm in Bristol when he was visiting his girlfriend then, Jane Asher. This is all coming out somewhere. Um, and there was a, a company near it that had Rigby on it and it just flowed with the song, apparently. But he did used to come sunbathe in here, didn't he? He did. He used to come and sunbathe in this graveyard and it could have been imprinted on his subconscious. Who knows? We've just driven about eight minutes down the road and we are now at the family home of the McCartneys, 24th Lynn Road. Now, 
John and Paul wrote loads of songs here. But my favourite story is they started writing She Loves You in a hotel room in Newcastle and the next day when they were home they finished it here in the dining room. Cool. There's only so much beetling about you can do before you get hungry. Back to Walton we went. That was a lovely lunch off one of the best pizzas we've had outside Italy. And we couldn't eat it all, so there's us tea! We've just told you the story of where Paul and John first met. Now, we've been doing a bit of research and we think we've found the exact spots looking at old photographs. I'm not sure how well you can see, but it's now a school on the site. But behind me, this lawn used to belong to the church and it's in that bottom corner where the outside stage was. And we found an old photograph that kind of justifies that. How cool is that? That is where music history changed, just in there. And just to capture the actual spot of the stage, Will's illegally scaled a wall in the churchyard. We're now at 251 Menlove Avenue at this house known as Mendips, which was the childhood home of John Lennon from the ages of 6 to 22, where he lived with his aunt Mimi. Cool, eh? You walk three words to get here are chair, locker, outfit, and they say that that small window up there on the left was John's bedroom. And Menlove Avenue is about a four minute drive from the centre of Walton. We're now at the iconic Red Gates of Strawberry Field. Strawberry Field is a very popular Beatles song. It was released on the 13th of February 1967. And John Lennon based it on his happy memories of playing in the gardens of Strawberry Field when it was a Salvation Army children's home. One of John Lennon's childhood treats was the garden party that took place here each summer. Oh, grow up. Now you might notice here it says Billy Shears. Now you probably know that Billy Shears is mentioned on the song at the end of the song of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, just before they go into a little help for my friends. But I don't know if you know the legend of Billy Shears. Now, I don't know the full story, so you might have to go into YouTube or Google and have a look for it. But basically, they reckon that Paul McCartney died or was killed around about the time of, of making Sergeant Pepper's and was replaced by this chap called Billy Shears. Now obviously it's poppycock, but, uh, but there's a couple of uh, interesting documentaries out there to uh, try and prove otherwise. So there you go, check it out. The building is still a Salvation Army building, dedicated to helping people. As well as an exhibiting space, dedicated to the story of the place, there is, of course, the obligatory gift shop and a cafe. These are the real gates. A minute ago, we were at the gates at the outside where we told you all about Strawberry Field. Well, they were not the original gates. These are the original gates, which are deep in the gardens of the site now. This is because in May 2000, these poor gates here were nicked, robbed. Two guys pulled up in a blue transit van, apparently, took them off, carted them away. Bad times. Anyway, sold them to a scrap dealer. The scrap dealer thought, mm, better check these out. Turns out when he realised he had the original ones, he was a good man and he returned them to the Salvation Army. And here they are now, deep in the gardens. Probably well sunk into about six metres of concrete, so no cheeky tea leaf can do this again. Incorporated into the grounds is a training centre for young people with special educational needs. Help! I need somebody. The day was wearing on and we still had a fair few sights to see. Back to the car! Twelve Arnold Grove is the birthplace and early childhood home of George Harrison. This was about a nine minute drive from Strawberry Field. Blair. Another seven minute drive back towards Liverpool is Admiral Grove, Ringo Starr's childhood home. And on to Liverpool city centre we went. A storm came down and it was freezing cold. It was turning into a hard day's night. This is the area around Matthew Street. 
as you can see, everything is Beatles related. This is such a great area. It has such a good vibe, even in the pouring rain. I wish we could travel back in time just for one day to the early 1960s. How cool would that be? This is the original entrance to the Cavern Club. It used to be marked by the Scylla Black statue. I could have sworn I saw her standing there. OK, I'll stop now. The club opened in 1957 as a jazz club. It became the centre of rock and roll for Liverpool and the Beatles played here often in their early years. This is the Eleanor Rigby statue in Stanley Street, just off Matthew Street. It was created by the entertainer Tommy Steele and unveiled in 1982. She looks kinda sad, unlike that idiot. It was time to go into the cavern and into the dry. It costs five pounds to go in. Even the staircase down is covered in pictures of the artists who've played here. has such a great vibe, whether it's packed or not. This stage usually has an artist doing Beatles covers. If in doubt, chuck your girlfriend in the air. If you'd like more information about the cavern, check out our Liverpool vlog. The links are below. Here we are at the cavern, the only place we should end a Beatles tour. Um, we've got our Cronenberg, our pints, so and we're very, very happy. Um, what I would say about today is it's very, very doable, but I think you do need a car. Even though the place is on a million miles away, it's definitely not walkable, apart from Liverpool city centre, that is. So it was really cool driving around, seeing everything we saw. Neither of us have seen any of that before, but the weather was shocking. I mean, look at the hair. It's gone curly. <laughs> it's gone curly. Well, so you got a favourite bit of the day, then? I have, and I think I'm going to steal your favourite bit of the day. Cool. Favourite bit of the day was kind of half breaking over the church wall to look into the corner of the playground of the school to see the actual spot where Paul McCartney first saw John Lennon play and where they first met. That's my favourite story and my favourite bit of today. It's a lot warmer in here than it is outside, isn't it, eh? So what my favourite part of the day? I, I would have said what you said, finding the exact spot where the bandstand was, where they played their first gig. 
Uh, the other favourite part of the day was probably seeing the real gates of Strawberry Fields because we knew before we went that they were replicas uh, but I didn't realise that the actual ones were still in the ground so that was good, that was good to see those and it was just good to see the bits we hadn't seen before it's taken longer than I thought it would it took us, it's half five now and we started at twelve and we've been in the car and as, as Rachel said it didn't take long to go between the houses and so on the time we stopped and looked and filmed and had something to eat time's gone on and I'll stop rabbiting uh, but we're in the cavern, enjoying a pint. This picture is cool. It is placed in the exact location of the original stage. We've had this pint, we're going to head back to the car and head on home, dry off by a warm fire, man we need that tonight, and finish the day as only a Beatles tour day could be finished by watching yesterday, the Beatles film, we love that, so as we say in Postcard and a Pint, cheers, cheers to, to the, the good time. time. Paul McCartney's in the studio and he says to the other guys, he says, Hey lads, I've just written this ace song called Hey Jude and I can't think of any words for the end, can you? And they went, nah, nah, nah. Ugh.